There's an old saying. I, I know that my chief of staff, Bob Frankel, I used to say all the time, and that is we have to always make sure the speaker looks good. And that is part of uh, our responsibility, and certainly uh, mine as a former speaker to understand that the last thing I want to do to this speaker is um, uh, bring any anything negative uh, to him or around him. So uh, we decided, and I certainly decided, that this is probably the best that I do not take the position and uh, I'll go out in the public sector, uh, private, excuse me, private sector, and uh, try to find some employment. I would have loved to have been back here. Uh, I do love this place and I have passion for it, And uh, but uh, this isn't the time. So hopefully we'll come back in a different capacity a couple of years down the road. Do you think you were treated at all unfairly since you're not the first lawmaker to be, uh, to be hired in a similar type of position? I think, you know, I mean, I think my wife and I were both not surprised that there probably even have had some folks that were uh, not going to be pleased with, with this decision. We expected that there'd be some press uh, that would be negative, uh, and I told the speaker that. Be prepared for it. Being the new speaker, that's you're going to get a lot of that. But uh, I, I think to the degree that I got was quite surprising. Uh, I think there is a lot of hypocrisy in it. But uh, hey, that's up to the media, you guys, to cover, and you have the right to write your stories and. You know, I've accepted the good stories and, and the bad, so it's part of, part of being in politics for the last 25 years. Given the offered me another, uh, a different way of doing it, maybe on a part-time basis, because he, he knows it wasn't really about the 120000 for me, really, it really is uh, about the insurance, and uh, uh, it's, it's probably the most important thing to me. Uh, you know, as you guys know, I, we have a situation uh, with me and my wife, and uh, all of us should be concerned about that. So. He put another offer on the table that would allow me to at least to have my uh, coverage for insurance uh, at a part-time level, uh, which again seemed to be uh, somewhat acceptable until uh, I think there were a little bit more restrictions on uh, the gubernatorial run, which would have made it, I think, even more difficult to be able to run for governor. Uh, so I felt at that time I did think about it, talked to my wife about it, and. Uh, we waited. I went to uh, Waterbury right after I left the speaker and was very encouraged. I had about uh, 75 uh, Latinos uh, that met me and were very encouraged to pump me up. So I was a little sad leaving the the, uh, the speaker, but came uh, to a room where people were supportive and uh, it was a great uh, contingent of Latinos and encouraged me again. And, made, and when I saw that and felt that again, uh, that the chances of running for governor still, well, I think, are, Jim, you, are very good. You, so you, spoke about, you spoke I about. I decided to go forward and. and not run next. Uh, run around. My, my governor uh, race became a conflict to him. I have to make a real solid decision for my boss. He would be my boss. I'd respect that. And uh, if, if it turned into that it was complicated, then I had to make a decision either to leave uh, the speaker or to stick with the speaker and, and not wear both hats. So I think both is complicated. It's complicated. We knew that. Uh, but we also knew that uh, we were used to that. I was used to that kind of schedule before. In fact, I thought it'd be even less hours because he told me it was kind of a nine to five sort of deal, which we all hear that right around this building, and then it turns out to be more. But I thought it'd be even less hours, be able to get out there and work, do my governor thing and the other things I was doing on the side uh, to make a living to run for governor. Can you think of another former legislator who was hired by the legislature who continued a political career? Now, obviously, we don't know if Rob Simmons one another day or not. <clears throat> but, but can you think of another legislator who took a staff position and then ran for a higher office? I can't. I mean, was that the, always the first? Was that the problem? I mean, you mentioned all these other folks, Cassiello, sure. Simmons, other people who got jobs after they either retired from the legislature, chose to leave, or were defeated. The difference here seems to be you're still running for a very high office, Governor. Right. You think that's why there was so much of a furor? Well, I'm not sure. Time? I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. Absolutely. I mean, I, we expected it. We just didn't expect it to be uh, as much. We did expect that there would be some some negative uh, press on it. And uh, you may have, but sometimes these things last a week or last two weeks. There's a life to these things. And uh, this certainly isn't going to be the last a controversial thing that the speaker or the minority leader or the governor do in the next few months is going to be a very difficult time.